Hi, my name is Margaret Ann, and I'm a needle felt artist. Today, I would like to demonstrate how needle felting is done and introduce you to my needle felted Smaug the Dragon and Balin the Dwarf King from the Hobbit series. This is wool roving. It comes off the carter in narrow strips. The fibers aren't going in one direction, like wool top that spinners spin into yarn, but that's perfect for needle felters. The fibers are easier to handle and the bit of cross hatching makes it easier to needle felt. The fibers have scales on them and that's what your felting needle grabs onto and meshes together. The type of roving you use to needle felt is very important. I like to use Romney roving with a bit of Cordell in it. These type of sheep's wool are coarser and have lots of scales to grab onto. The type of felting needle you use is also very important. The higher the number, the finer the needle. The lower the number, the coarser the needle. So a 34 to 36 needle is good to start a project and a 40 needle is good for fine details. The needles have notches or slits in them. Think opposite of barbed wire. Barbs protrude away from the main point. The needles have slits cut into them. Those notches are what grabs onto the scales and felts them together. So to start, I take a length of roving and pull it. We rarely cut wool roving. It has a staple length, and if you pull it gently, it will separate at that staple length. I take that length and separate it. It's just a little easier to handle when you start. Let's make a simple bead. You roll that length four or five times and needle felt that down flat. Roll it three or four more times and then roll it oh three or four more times and again felt that down as flat as you can get it. Even though we're doing a bead shape you want to have a flat hard inner core. Start tucking in the ends as you go to start getting that round shape and then also felt along the top ridge that you're going to get from rolling it. You really want that core to be solid. Master the bead in this technique because it is the start of a lot of needle felted projects. Then you pick up the start of the bead and you squinch it like an accordion. You don't want to bend it, you want it to be really compressed because you don't want a void or like an air bubble in there. When you do that, after you do that, then you turn it the opposite way and start to roll it on your felting pad. Even that rolling starts to have those little scales grab onto one another and start felting. It's very important to have consistency and have the bead be very firm. No air bubbles, no void feeling. So your bead should finish and be really almost rock hard and it can be with this type of wool roving. Um, you don't want any air bubble or any empty feeling on the inside. On a smaller project you can get away with that for a while. But if you're doing something like a dragon and you're going to be working on the neck and you have an air bubble in there, sooner or later it's going to start to droop. One of the biggest questions I get is what armature are they built over or what are they stuffed with? They're not. They're the wool and they just started out exactly like I demonstrated. Also, there isn't any sewing on these pieces. The extremities are needle felted right into the bodies. I also hand dyed all of the roving for both pieces. 
It can be a bit tricky to learn to needle felt from a video. So much about needle felting is about the feel. So if you feel you need some help, try and see if there's a class in your area. And if there isn't, call your local yarn shop, fiber shop, the museum, or an establishment that promotes the arts and ask them, request a needle felting class. No one knows what you want if you don't ask for it. It's been a pleasure sharing my passion with you and I hope you enjoyed the video and seeing how needle felting is created. If you'd like to see more of my works and classes I offer, feel free to visit my website at www.theRovingArtist.com. Thank you.